This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the pens and ink that I've been using this week as well as testing the pen and ink and paper that I picked up on my trip to Vanessa's pen shop yesterday. My sister texted me yesterday morning and simply said do you want to go to Little Rock and I knew what that meant because she's been talking for a long time about wanting to go to Van Ness's pen shop. So I said sure and we hopped in the car and thank goodness she did all the driving. It was a three and a half hour trip each way but she and I both agreed that it was worth it. We had a blast. On the drive there I spent my time just browsing Van Ness's shop and I came across the Monteverde Ritma and <laughs> I've got to say, when the Monteverde Ritma came out, I wasn't that interested in it. I thought it was a neat little pen, but it wasn't something that uh, sparked my interest. But this is a pocket neck Ritma. So when I got to the shop, a young man came up to us and asked if he could help us find anything. And I told him that I had seen the pocket Ritma on their website. And he said, sure, we've got those in the back. What nib do you want and I got the flex nib in fact the flex nib was all that they had left so I was glad because I was wanting to try one of these and when he brought the pen out to me he asked if I wanted him to dip it in ink so I could test it and that is that is a fantastic service that's a, a great reason to visit a brick and mortar pen store because I've got to be honest Monteverde and Conklin pens in the past I've just found them to be kind of eh but this was an inexpensive pen it was on sale and I thought it was worth giving it a try but being able to test the nib before I bought it that was just fantastic I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way I'll go ahead and mention I got a package of the Yamamoto paper tasting. I got the unique Japanese papers. I picked up a bottle of KWZ honey and I got another one of my beloved Rhodia ice pads. So it was in the little paper sleeve and when I opened it up I was pleasantly surprised by the size. I was afraid that it was going to be a larger type of pen. When I slid it out of the, the little pen bed, the, the heft of the pen is really nice. It's small so it's not a heavy pen but it's very dense. I'm not sure if the pen barrel is made out of brass or possibly stainless steel but it has a magnetic cap, a glossy kind of gunmetal um, cap and grip section and finial and a black clean looking flex nib it's got the cutouts in it and I'm pretty sure this looks like it's probably sm smaller than the nib that's on the regular size Ritma but I'm going to ink it up with my favorite green ink of choice at the moment, Sailor Tokiwa Matsu. And I'll pause the video in a minute and ink it up and come back and do a writing sample. But it's the finial is removable and it's got a replacement finial that's on a rubber lanyard. And when I got out to the car I immediately removed the finial and put the lanyard on it and wore it like a necklace. And I told my sister that, you know, I loved being able to wear it as a necklace. I was, I'm going to wear it every day is what I told her. And she said, oh, it's a pendant. So Monteverde missed out on an opportunity. They could have called it the Ritma pendant. But you just unscrew the finial and replace it with the finial that has the lanyard on it. I'm not going to do that right now because when I'm doing the writing sample that lanyard will just get in the way. One downside I see already is this glossy cap and hardware is a fingerprint magnet but 
got minimal branding, just says Monteverde Ritma. That appears to be laser engraved. It's nice and clean looking. The finial is um, a metal, I think it might be aluminum. It didn't feel too heavy, but it's the olive color also. And I'm not sure which parts are magnetic. It's a magnetic cap, if I didn't mention that already. And it fits on there nice and tightly, thank goodness, if, since you're going to have it hanging from your neck. And it does make that popping sound if you uncap it like that. But if you're not a fan of that noise, you can just uncap it like that. But it's got a nice feel to it. Now, I have smaller hands, so um, if you've got larger hands, you may not be able to use it unposted. But it posts magnetically, nice and securely. Oh, it makes a really well-balanced pen. I will definitely be using it posted. It just, the weight just centers right there in the, the bend of your hand. And it came with... The little Monteverde mini converter and it has the little plastic bead in it and it's a push converter it's not threaded that was nice it also came with two cartridges one black and one blue it's got a warranty card what is this instructions for the lanyard installing the lanyard and the converter this is the warranty card just some information about this special edition. I know that Monteverde nibs, you can get replacement nibs, but with this being a, a mini pocket pen, I was wondering if, if you could buy replacement nibs for it or if that was something that was intended. So I tried to unscrew the nib and it I wasn't able to unscrew it. I don't know if maybe it's just in there tightly or it's not intended to be threaded out. I tried pulling it out. I didn't pull too hard, but it didn't feel like it was a friction fit nib. So I don't know if it's intended to be removed, so I'm not going to try to remove it. I don't know which parts of the pen are magnetic, if there's magnets in the section and the cap or whenever I go to ink it up I'll test it on my refrigerator and see which parts are magnetic but I don't think I'm going to be dipping this in ink to ink it up I think I'm going to use a my ink syringe to ink up the converter but I'll go ahead and pause the video now and go ink it up so we can test out the papers and the new ink after I shot the first take of this video, I forgot whether or not I mentioned which parts of the pen actually were magnetic. It turns out that I think just that little ring that you can see in there is a magnet. The cap is the only part that's magnetic. The section and the back of the pen are not. I tested them. So I will probably be continue to ink up this pen using an ink syringe. I don't want ink to get up in that little groove and then come into contact with the magnet since it could possibly rust. But now back to the original video. Okay, so I've got the Ritma, my Pilot Custom Heritage 91, and a Pilot 78G all inked up with Tokiwa Matsu, and I'm going to do some writing samples on my new paper, and after that, I'm going to swatch KWZ Honey. I love how this paper comes packaged. There's lots of information about the three different types of paper. And the little information sheet on the front gives you a little short summary of the three types of paper that are included. The 
clamp takes a little effort to get off it. It was stretched to the max. That's a decent amount of paper. Okay, the first pad of paper is the Cosmo Air Light, and it is B7, the smallest. I'm going to begin with the Ritma. Okay, it felt nice. It felt, it's not glassy smooth. It feels soft. Soft but not spongy. Next, I've got my Pilot Custom Heritage 91 with a 14 karat fine nib. And, again, this paper doesn't feel glassy smooth. There's a bit of texture to it, but this fine nib feels pleasant to write with. There's a hint of feedback, but it's not, uh, the fine nib is not digging into the paper. Now, I find Pilot fine nibs to be pretty smooth. I have a feeling my fine sailor nib might dig into the paper. I do have issues with it picking up paper fibers and has to be cleaned out from time to time. Let me see. I didn't do the wetness test with the Ritma. Not as wet as the Pilot nib. I've got a Pilot 78G plus with an extra fine, or no, this one has a fine nib in it. I don't have the converter inked up. I've been dip testing it with different inks. I'm looking for a pen to use with some poor quality paper, and this is shaping up to be a good candidate. I just need to find a good ink to pair it with. Oh, this is very smooth. Now, it does, let's see, it feels drier than the gold nib did because it is drier. It feels dry but it's smooth. Just a bit of feedback, not scratchiness, just a bit of friction that slows the nib down and gives you some control. All right, and that's Cosmo Air Light. And I'm seeing some sheen. Let me see if this is still wet. No. That is, see that sheen right here? It looks like the ink is still wet on the page. Nice. The green really comes out. This is a, a dark green ink, but the brightness really shows up on this paper. That's nice. Okay, the next paper is A6 size, and it is New Chiffon Cream. It says it's thick, light, and soft. This, I can kind of feel the, it feels like the paper is, the paper feels wet, like it's soaking up the paper and, or soaking up the ink and getting a little soggy. Yeah, see how it soaks up the ink? You can feel that sogginess in the paper. It, to me, I don't like that feeling. 
it doesn't feel quite as good as the Cosmo Air Light, or it doesn't feel as good as the Cosmo Air Light. Let's see what the Custom Heritage 91 feels like. Yeah, this isn't as pleasant. I, it feels like the nib is getting stuck on the paper. It's getting bogged down. Yeah, it really soaks up the ink. I'll be curious to see what it looks like on the back side when I get done with each of these. And the 78G. This one isn't too bad. It's a drier pen, so... I guess the paper doesn't get as soggy. See how dry that is. It's the driest of all three. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and look at the back of the Cosmo Air Light. No bleed through. Not much show through. It's a thick paper, so that makes sense. And the new chiffon paper, it's lighter. Mm, surprisingly, no bleed through. Very little show through very little and I think this is the poorest oh yeah this feels like a very porous paper this seems like it's the poorest quality of the three papers and the description does say that it's a medium quality book book paper it has a low fiber density that is very high very light for its thickness and that's believable. Let me see. I think this is the one that said that it's suited for... No, this one said it was well suited for ballpoints and fountain pens. I feel like this is the kind of paper that would be good for ballpoint pens. Um, so let's give it a try. This one feels more pleasant than the, the chiffon paper. My pen's not getting as bogged down. But it does feel like it's absorbing the ink. It feels pretty dry. It makes my pen feel drier. Yeah, looks even drier than the chiffon paper. This is um, Frontier Tough 70 because it's 70% whiteness. Okay. I don't predict I'm going to like this with my Pilot Fine nibs. Let's try it with the Custom Heritage 91. It's not terrible, but it's not enjoyable. Yeah, pretty dry. Looks like it's just as dry as the Ritma and the 78G steel nib. This one doesn't feel too bad. Actually feels pretty nice. Out of the three, it's the most pleasant. Very dry, but it didn't feel too dry. Let me see. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. No bleed through or show through. Let's see. No feathering or very little feathering. You really, well, 
you have to look really close. It's not obvious feathering. So this one didn't feel too bad with a drier writing pen, the Frontier Tough Paper. Um, and this one as well, with the drier writing pen, since it's an absorbent paper, the drier writing smooth pens felt nice. No feathering at all. The Tough Paper had a little bit of feathering, and it feels porous, and there's quite a bit of texture to it. You can hear it. The chiffon paper has less texture. It's more of a creamy paper. And the Cosmo Air Light is a coated paper. It's pretty smooth. No feathering. And that sheen really shows up. I want to go ahead and swatch my KWZ Honey. I've tried to get a sample of this several times, but it's always sold out some. And it's it's wrapped in plastic wrap. This is probably the largest bottle of ink I own now. I like to begin with the swatch up at the top and the swatch in the ink bottle. I do that with my tweezers. Mm. Grabs the paper nicely, made a nice crisp swatch. And quite a range of shade of ink. glass dip pen. I always do a scribble over here. It comes off the nib really quickly, so it's, I'm glad I did that little scribble before I do the writing. Very wet, but pleasant to write with. Mm, I like the range of shades you get. It doesn't look like, well, there may be some sheen, just some very subtle gold sheen. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.